guys, how you doing? It's Tom. I'm back with another video. I have one of my adoring fans behind me. <laughs> it's always the opposite with the camera, you know. Anyway. Yes, we missed... In, I'm here in Manila, of course, northern Quezon City. And um, we got some rain yesterday, uh, but we didn't... You know, the typhoon... I don't think is doing a direct hit uh, with the Philippines. It's kind of like going up north, but it is providing some rain and some monsoon effect apparently on the western, mostly on the western part of the country, uh, down to Palawan, you know. Um, so, but like I said, we got some pretty good rain yesterday, and it's been windy, man, you know, really strong breezes, you know, like even yesterday, today. But it's nice. It feels good. It's it's still warm out and it's sunny out, but there's a pretty strong breeze. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd let you know what's going on with that because it's kind of a was well, kind of a big thing, you know, as far as the you know the weather didn't know what this ty typhoon was going to do, you know, because it looked pretty powerful after it uh, rolled through Guam, you know, and I think did some damage there. Luckily, though, Guam's not a very populated island um, or country. But uh, anyway, but you know, on this video, I wanted to just, I wanted to talk about some practical, just some practical issues and I guess maybe advice, you know, uh, and about money and, and some other things, you know. Uh, oh, before I get to that, though, I'm not going to talk anything about, I don't really have any updates on the visa situation or the Modernization Act. I did find out. I am able to get onto some of these websites now uh, that were, for some reason, I was getting blocked out of them. But there's really no updates. It, it, it appears, okay, that you'll, on a tourist visa, they're not going to change, they're not going to make it so that you can only stay here for three months and then you got to leave or whatever, apparently. But I don't, that's not concrete though, you know. I'm just going to wait until it comes out and it's done but it passed the third time in the house of representatives and it's basically every time they vote on it i mean it's like there's like zero like no votes from, you know from what i'm seeing it's like 242 to zero or whatever you know so i'm really and i'm trying to figure out why they have to keep running it through and you know like how many more times would they have to vote yes on it before it goes to the senate that's my question you know I think what happens is there's a big package of multiple bills, okay? And I think as it keeps going through, a few of them might be getting no'd on, you know, like voted no on, you know what I mean? Where, where they might be dropping off of the package, you know what I mean? So they, you have to include the whole package and, and they vote on it, you know, individually apparently. And then whatever's left, like, I don't know how many times they have to do this, but then obviously whatever, the bulk of the package that's left, is then finally will go through the Senate probably. And once if it passes the Senate, I don't see any reason why the president wouldn't sign it because these are things that the president, the new president, wants to do. You know what I mean? This is mostly his ideas and stuff, you know. So, um, but anyway, so we'll see what happens. You know, I also have the visa company that I use for my visa, my SRV. I kind of have them working on it, like trying to figure out, you know, what the, what the uh, end result's going to be here and then to let me know, you know. So we'll see, guys. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that the video I did on this last time, I didn't give, I didn't tell anybody like, oh, it's definitely going to be three months only, and then you're kicked out, and then that's it. You know, like, I, I did not, I, I, quite the opposite, you know, when it came to that, right? So I'm kind of glad I worded it that way and stuff, because, you know, obviously, now you hear things that are, oh, no, that's not true at all, and, you know, it's, it's still going to be three years and all that. I'm, you know, I'm hearing different things, so let's just see what happens, okay? when the final tally is in. But, yeah, I don't think, I don't, it looks like they're not going to make any major, you know, changes to that, to that section of the tourist visa, but we'll see, you know. Um, but, anyway, guys, I wanted to talk about money a little bit here, too, right? Like, I, 
if you're if you're going to come to the Philippines to live, right, and you're you're confident, like you're not just feeling it out, you know, like you're at the stage where you're not just going to come here for a month or two and then see what happens and then make your decision, but you've already decided you're coming here, you know, to live, and maybe you've already got a girlfriend or a wife. I don't know, you know, like in you know Filipina. And so, you know, you've been waiting and now the pandemic's over and then maybe you're at the point where, you know, you're old enough to where you don't have to work anymore, or, you know, and you're financially ready to come here, okay? If you're in that category, I'm just going to tell you this, man, like, especially if you're in the, if you don't have like a bunch of money in the bank, you know what I mean? Like you got like sort of like a minimum amount, like. And, and whatever that minimum amount is, right, like in your head, like you're like, oh, I've, I've got, I'm going to go there with at least 20000 in my bank account, plus I've got my Social Security and maybe some other income of like 2000 a month or whatever, okay, for example. And if you're in that situation, I'm going to tell you, bring, make sure that you've got at least $10,000 more in the bank than what you were thinking, you know, what, what you what you were formally sort of comfortable with, okay? And when that when that comfort level is a, in, on the lower side, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about guys who've got like three, four, or five hundred grand or more in the bank. You don't have to worry pretty much. I mean unless you're gonna come here and spend money like a like a drunken you know what, you know. Um, you know what I mean? But, but if you're sort of on the, you know, you don't have a ton of money, but you got enough, you know, just shoot for like having at least 10 grand more. And whether that number that was previously in your head is 20,000, whether it's 30,000 or even 40,000, right? Just try to pad it with an extra 10 grand. <laughs> because the first year you're living here, you're going to spend more money than you think. You know what I mean? Now you got, I don't care how anal you are, or how numbers oriented you are, and all that, right? You're going to be like, oh, no, but, you know, th this is going to cost this much, and I've already figured it all out, and, you know, and I'm a genius, and, and all this, right? But shit's going to happen, okay? You, 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 especially if you're older, you know, you're over 60, it, it, you know, very, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape, okay? And stuff happened with me, you know? And I'm in I mean, I'm not going to say I'm in, you know, I'm not in great shape, but I mean, I'm in pretty good shape, you know, like for, I'm going to be 63 soon, and uh, and I'm in pretty good shape, but I had some issues, some health issues, so, you know, and, and really didn't previously, you know what I mean, in the U.S., so you'll, you'll be surprised by what might, could happen, <laughs> you know, and it's probably going to happen within that first year, you know what I mean, so you're going to have extra expenses, you know. So just plan for that, you know. Pad your bank account. Um, you know, and also, like, and I know a lot of you guys aren't going to necessarily live in Manila, you know, like I am, right? You know, you're going to go to some of the smaller cities. You're going to go to Bohol. You're going to go to Dumaguete. You're gonna, you might go to Bacolod or Ilo Ilo or, you know, somewhere like that. And it's going to be a lot, or maybe Cebu, you know. But whatever you do, or wherever you go, think twice about sort of like having a motorcycle as your primary mode of transportation. That's what I'm going to tell you. Especially, you know, when you're an older guy. You know what I mean? You're over 50, let's just say. You know? Because it, I'm telling you, driving here is not the same at all as driving in the U.S., you know, it's not the same at all, and uh, you'll be, you know, you, you don't want to be unpleasantly surprised, you know, to find that out after you've already been, you know, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, I love driving a bike back in the U.S. and all that, and I'm telling you here, until you figure out how to, how they, people drive here, you know, the culture of driving is different here, you know, the traffic flow, everything is different here, you know, than it is in the U.S. You know, there's very few, like, stoplights and stop signs and stuff like that. And it's just, like, it's all, like, you know, just, you have to be, you have to be careful, you have to pay attention, you have to drive defensively, 
okay, big time. And you just have to sort of figure out, like, oh, should I let this guy in? You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, each case, each guy is a different case. You know, it's not, there's no general rule like there is in the U.S. Like, well, oh, I got, yeah, I did get an accident, but it was his fault. You know, like, some people have that mentality that, you know, it's like, no, I was in the right of way, you know, and they don't, they don't want to hit their brakes or whatever sometimes in the U.S. You know, they'd rather lay on their horn, you know, and then get it and then ultimately hit somebody, you know, or because, oh, that guy was wrong. I was in the right, you know, instead of just driving defensively like my dad taught me many, many years ago, 45 years ago, you know, uh, you know, and just, and just, hey, hit the brake, man. Yeah, he was wrong, but do you want to get in an accident? You know, like, you know, do you want to? Yeah, you're gonna be the you're gonna be the most correct driver at the, in the cemetery. You know what I mean? You're gonna be oh well, you know it's gonna say in your gravestone. Well, I was in the right, you know, I was in the right away. You can't you can't even think about driving like that here. You know, you have to just you have to be very alert. You know, and you have to watch the other guy, and you have to let let him in. You know, it's the way they do it here. Sometimes a guy's not going to wait forever to turn into a tra traffic situation. He's just going to work his way into it. And somebody's going to have to let him in. You know what I mean? That's the way it is here. And if you're, and if you're driving, if, it might be you, you know, that is going to be let in, you know? So there's just things like that that are much different than, like, the U.S., you know what I mean, where there's just lights and, okay, you know, I got the red light, he's got the green light, you know, everything... It's not like that here, so, you know, just think twice about getting a motorcycle until you know how to drive here, you know. I would really, and if you absolutely have to have a vehicle, just get a car, you know what I mean? Like, just get a car, at least you got the protection around you, you know, if you do get into a small accident or something, you'd probably be okay, you know what I mean? Because, you know, with the traffic flows and all that, in most of the cities, you're not going to be able to go 60, 70 miles an hour like you do in the U.S., you know. You're going to be doing like 30 miles an hour, you know, maybe 40, you know. Um, you know what I mean? If you're lucky, you know. So the odds are is if you do get into an accident, you know, you're, you're a lot less likely to get seriously hurt, you know, in a car. But not so with a motorcycle, you know what I mean? You could hit something going 20 miles an hour in a motorcycle, man, and you could get seriously hurt, you know, especially if you land on your head, you're not wearing a helmet, for example, you know, uh, yeah, it's just something to, to think about, man, you know, it's my uh, advice, you know, so, um, yeah, I'm just trying to think about some other stuff to talk about, I mean, um, yeah, just think about, think about, be careful with your budget, you know, as far as the monthly budget, I mean, again, you know, we can have these conversations where, yeah, you can technically live on 800 a month in the province or whatever, you know what I mean, but it just depends on where you want to live, man, you know, like, I remember hearing a story about a guy, you know, it was a one video, like, somebody interviewed him or something, <clears throat> and literally, this guy was living way in the province, you know, and he was an older guy, and he was on a pretty tight budget, I mean, like, really tight, like, 600 a month or something like that, you know, but, you know, he didn't even have money to uh, renew his tourist visa, so he was, uh, he was overstaying for, like, years, you know, like, literally, like, years. And he just figured, well, you know, he wasn't worried about it. You know what I mean? He was just like, oh, you know, they, people know me here, and they know that, you know, I, sp I, sp I spend some money here, and, you know, like, they know that, you know, like, they, like in other words, he thought, well, this country will be worse off without me. <laughs> That's what this guy thought, okay? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm thinking, dude, if you're only, if you're only living on, you know, if you only got, like, six or 800 a month coming in, it's not like you're some big spender, you know, like, like the Philippines ain't going to go broke if you get sent back to the U.S., you know. So, I don't know, I just thought it was a pretty, it was a couple of years ago that I, that I remember seeing this video. I don't know the guy's name, it's not really important, you know. But it's just like a good example of like, 
I don't know, man. You know, like, just, you know, be careful. Because one of the things that they might be doing now with some of these modernization changes is they might get a little more stringent with overstaying. You know what I mean? Not just the, you know, not just if you're a scumbag, you know, and if you turn out doing something stupid, you know, and you, you, you break the law and then you get caught and then they find out that you're overstaying. But they might, they might get a little more stringent, especially as they modernize the systems and, you know, use computers more and stuff like that. They might get a little more, you know, stringent on like, hey, you know, turning the other cheek on a, on a guy who's overstaying for two or three years you know what i mean so just don't you know just don't think that everything is going to stay the same and you know and, and all that forever you know so just be cognizant of that you know i would always suggest to you to do not overstay you know just you know you, you should renew your tourist visa at least one week before it comes up due all right because you never know you know like and then there could be holiday the next week, or, you know, there could be some other day off, or, you know, because there's a lot of Filipino holidays here, you know. It's not like, you know, they don't abide by the, like, the American holidays, but they've got several Filipino, you know, national holidays and stuff. So, you know, just, yeah, don't wait till the last minute, you know, when you're, renew when you're renewing your tourist visa, if, if you're on a tourist visa, you know. Um... But, yeah, I think that's all I want to talk about on this one, guys. Uh, so I hope you get something out of it. And uh, please, you know, don't, uh, don't be shy. You know, you want to send me a comment, go for it. You know, I like to see some comments. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, you know. And please subscribe if you haven't already done so. All right, guys. I'll see you later.